All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone, Russell Wright, Network Empire and AutomaticVideoTraffic.com. Looks like we do have a few people uh, coming into the room here. I do know that there has been some major fiascos with the time and date of this webinar, probably because Phoenix is in the twilight zone, doesn't know whether it's coming or going, and when it comes to daylight savings, I've talked to people who are professional time people who do not, um, do not even know what time it is in Arizona. So that being said, uh, we are working things out and probably many people will be watching the replay of this, although I'm pleased to see we have over seven people that have arrived on time. Again, my apologies, I did drop that in the video traffic. I think after today there will be no problems with the Phoenix time zone. Cross your fingers in GoToMeeting. Clearly GoToMeeting is also not clear about the difference between Arizona and Pacific Daylight and Mountain and all that stuff. All right, how is everybody doing? Give me a one if you can hear me clearly, first of all. I probably should have checked uh, already straight away. Let me just go ahead and get... Kevin and I are both using multiple monitors. Make sure... Uh, do you guys see the traffic generation? Let's go over to automatic video traffic. Give me a one if you can properly see uh, this screen. You should see automatic video pin vid traffic. Okay, looks like most of you can. Good. Everybody can hear me. I don't sound like gibberish. It's been a strange week technically. I think it's that transition from winter, from uh, the one season to the other into winter. I don't know. Every, everything here in Phoenix starts to get cold, and people in Arizona don't do well with even a little bit of cold. It's kind of humorous. Some of you in colder places, you have people walking around with sweaters on, and it's still 80, you know, 75 degrees. That's considered very, very cold here. <laughs> uh, just, I find that very humorous. Andy, it's good to see you. Yeah, I know Brian, right? Uh, wimps. Brian Hassler said wimps. Yeah. Okay, so I have a little bit of surprise for you guys today. I'm trying, I have this idea, and this idea is an experiment, that we could keep the webinars rolling on every, every other week or so. Uh, a week, every week might be too much. It's just an experiment. I want, since I created the concept of the Perpetual Mastermind Group, I don't want to overdo it, but I also don't want to leave you guys with no webinars or only one every quarter. Um, here's what's going on. We just wanted to keep these short and sweet because these were unplanned and unscheduled bonuses. Um, I am leaving for Nashville on Saturday to go, first of all, to my family estate. I have property in the Franklin area, which happens to be also where OMG Live and a few other uh, business partners and or strategic uh, associates and also business partners live. Uh, Sue so will be arriving a few weeks, a few days later, uh, so I'm heading out. And I definitely will not be able to create a webinar or do a webinar this upcoming Wednesday, so we're going to go ahead and cancel the next week's webinar. But the idea is to keep these flowing and new ideas moving in because there's a lot. This course is a pivot point for a lot of material and a lot of new standards that we have to watch and communicate with you. It's also in its early prototype phases because you guys are... Uh, early adopters. So what Kevin is, uh, again, I consider Kevin a mentor in the area of semantic markup as well as many other areas. And he continues to educate me as I go through the process, just like you guys, guys go through in the semanticwebtraining.com course. If you haven't taken that course, definitely one of the things you might want to look into at some point. Uh, we'll give you as much as we can, but not all of it applies to what we're doing in here. But again, just a wealth of information and knowledge. So we're actually going to take a little information from that and get into it. Now, first of all, first and foremost, I want to show you where it's located right now. If you go to the marketing call to action cosmetic and video plugins. Uh, by the way, Andy, I think you're here. I wanted to thank you for pointing out. If it wasn't Andy, it was one of you. Wanted to point out an issue with the improper video. Uh, install short code UI, uh, you were correct. Uh, there is, we covered that very well on the webinar. I know it's somehow, sometimes a little bit cumbersome to parse through a three and a half hour webinar. Uh, so what I did is I pointed to the much shorter version in here uh, where that's located. So thanks for that uh, reminder there and that, that data is now, should be corrected. At least pointing you to a much shorter version. Uh, so what we've done is we've added a, why is it missing? This is annoying. 
Okay, so yes, if you go to phase three right here, and you see where it has advanced short code UI semantic markup trick. Trick is kind of belittling what Kevin's going to be talking about today. It's actually a, a huge and vast and important slippery slope and rabbit hole that I do recommend that all of you begin to start going down. <laughs> this is semantic web. There's too many reasons to mention why you want to do that. We cover it so well in the semanticwebtraining.com course. We also cover it in other areas. The long and the short of it is here is a, let me just see, if you go, I just want to make sure you guys know where to go. We're going to be adding this bonus webinar to this section. And we're going to also be adding it into the, the webinar replay area. Here's the first, here's the video that Kevin did. It's a short uh, version, introduction of what it is that we're doing today. I left you a little video on it. And of course you can see, probably I, I want to give you a text file that you can download. This is not really going to fly to just embed it right in the HTML. But this is the information that Kevin is going to be talking about today and probably a little bit more. So I'm going to pass the controls to him. Just quickly know that the overview here is in short code UI. It is Kevin had suggested weeks ago, actually. I didn't even hear what he was saying until it came up in, the, in a day-to-day -day practice issue, an operational issue, that it, if you want to go to the next level of short code UI and or we will address this in when the short code module in Video Crack and Dominator comes out in the next couple of months, we'll have that a short code function built right into the software. Um, you can actually mark up and tell Google and search engines the schema for any kind of advertising banners and or tech promotional text, I believe. Kevin will get into that today. That means that you're just one step closer to, I, I'm not going to use the exact words that Kevin used, but telling Google exactly what they need and want to hear so that they know exactly what you're doing and they can't do jack about your promotions or banners. You don't really have to worry about all the crap that's going out on there in terms of you know, the SEO stuff. This is related to Pound and Penguin. You also, of course, do have to follow. Uh, Kevin, you should correct me if I'm wrong, but you would still have to uh, follow instructions when it comes to no follow and do follow, or or is that not correct? Yeah. Yeah, you still yeah, have to follow that. So, yeah, always best to sort of follow the basics. I mean, Google is the elephant in the room at the moment. That's what they want. Um, and, you know, sort of they've got to follow the same rules as the rest of us. Um, but for the time being, yeah, no follow is very important. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pass you the controls. And for all of my okay. hemming and hawing about being able to do that, I thought that I knew how to do it. Now I have to figure that out. So hang on a second. How do I pass a control to another viewer? Sue usually does that. Let's see. I know it says that Sue Bell is talking. That's because she was busy, busy, busy other things so I logged in under a user account in order to start the webinar because she just doesn't give me that kind of control I have no idea why I think it's the change presenter <laughs> somewhere, I'm looking for it <clears throat> this could be fun folks uh, as Russ says uh, I hope you don't see the screen that I've got with the things that I don't want you to see <laughs> <laughs> let me see I am having one hell of a time finding the change presenter let, let me see if I can do that from you yeah. should be. Yeah. Okay. Me, uh, yeah, just go for it, Kevin. I'm, I got a bunch yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Okay, so I've got um, to just do this. And, okay, can you all tell me, give me one if you can see a screen that says Pimbit Promotional Sites, please. Yeah, we got, I've got it for sure. Okay. So... What we're going to do in this quick webinar is um, just show you, as Russ has said, um, some additional magic that you can use within the short code UI and also some schematic or schema.org markup um, to sort of put around your adverts uh, and links. Now, what I want to do is um, just sort of direct you down to the bottom. You can see that this particular video is in the brand building category. Um, this video here is in the customer engagement category. Okay, so if you can all see the bottom left of the screen. And what I'll do is I'll go into customer engagement and beneath the video I want you to look at this part that I put in here, which says text 
here. Okay. Now, if I go back a screen and come into brand building, <laughs> hi Steve. <laughs> um, here we can see that this says text here. We can help you build your brand. Now, give me a one if you think that I've got multiple short codes that I've put in, and a two if you think it's all in one short code. Let's have a quick quiz. So it's got a couple of answers. Excellent. Andy's on the ball. So let me um, quickly log in and uh, I'll show you how this is done. You've got the video in the training area as Russ has already said. But I'll go over it again now and we'll um, take uh, a few questions as well throughout. So with the short codes, in the under video uh, banner I think I've put this, uh, it could be the under video text, let me, it's the under video text, just my luck. Okay, so here, the basics of this um, are that in what we've shown you before, we've asked you to use a simple snippet. But this is such an advanced plugin that if we use advanced shortcode, we can scroll all the way down and we can use PHP logic. And what the logic is, is that with some clever code, um, you know, sort of PHP is uh, clever and WordPress makes it even cleverer, we can tell the pages or the categories um, specifically what it is that we want to appear within that short code element that we put on the page. So within the page that you've got, you've got the one short code under video text. You don't need to change that for every single page. As long as you've got that there, the code that you'll find in the members area is this code here. Okay, now put simply, um, the code says if the page is a single page and it's in the category brand building, then display whatever it is that you put here. So can I get a one from everyone if you understand that much so far? But excellent. Did you guys? Okay. <laughs> I, get, I wanted so to. The next thing. Hey, Kevin. I wanted to yeah, say yeah. I wanted to say to everyone. Sorry, Russ. Did you guys know that it was possible to put PHP code into uh, into the short code UI or any short code? I'm just letting you know that I actually did not know that. And these are the kinds of things that I learned from Kevin like pretty much every day. I mean, some of you I know like probably Brian might have known that, but I totally didn't. <laughs> Go ahead, Kevin. Okay, so so that I can get a, a better feel of where you folks are at. Can I get a one if all of you or any of you are confident and capable with PHP and a two if you want me to go into this in a little bit more detail. So one if you're okay with PHP, two if you need me to go into things in a little bit more detail. Okay, so most of you are um, really okay with PHP and that's excellent. It's about 90% so, surprisingly, Kevin. Yeah, this is really good. You guys are really, really advanced. Well yeah, done for all you are. <laughs> this is going to make this so much easier. So what we can do then is um, for the people that sort of see this later on, um, this tag here, the question mark greater than sign, denotes the end of PHP, and the less than question mark PHP denotes the beginning of PHP, and between there, is what we're going to put in. Now, to make this work, what you need to be aware of is that where it says in category and we've got the uh, brackets uh, and a word in there, this needs to be the slug 
of your category. Okay, that's all you need to know is that um, with the file that we've got, and I'll drag that there so that you can see, I'll make sure that Russ has this and we upload this file for you to download so that there's no nasty uh, surprises when you cut and paste. As long as you change the slug for the appropriate categories okay, in this and you put either text or images in between the end of the PHP and the beginning, whatever you have in this element here will appear in that category. Okay? And the same goes here. So customer engagement is another category I've got and this will appear in customer engagement, video marketing, and this will appear here. And if you've got more than um, four or five categories, all you need to do is copy uh, the, the whole format essentially uh, down to this line here. Okay, so you'd replicate um, this part here underneath and put in the new category. So is everyone happy with that? If I can get a one if you're happy with that and a two if you're not. Everybody's happy with that. That's brilliant. Okay, so you've seen the result of that, but that now means that each of your categories okay, can have different adverts pointing to um, a different product or something that is important to you. You can try different adverts. If you're using ad management software, which we'll be covering um, at some point later on, Probably next year, early next year. <laughs> or um, prob yeah, really when you want to schedule it, Kevin, probably after our event or after. Our yeah, uh, what I've got to do is just sort of get all of the um, I's dotted and the T's crossed. Um, but what you can then have is add rotation and you put additional code in here and that just gives you even more bang for your buck. So what I need to do now is um, I'm going to log out of here because if you've got that and you can do that you already know the benefits of having different adverts in different categories and different messages. So the second part of what we're going to do is look at um, the source of this particular page and explain how by default the PIMVID, semantic uh, PIMVID thing that you've got already has enough markup in it and where it is so that you can um, safely put your adverts in and Google and the other sponsors of schema.org, um, Yahoo, Microsoft, Yandex, etc., will know that the banner that you put there in that top element is already an advert. And the code is really, really simple. So I've already highlighted this. Um, the important part here is item type or item scope, item type, schema.org, WP, ad block. Now, uh, as a bit of a, a bonus um, for those of you that haven't already taken the semantic web training course, it is essential that you use the correct capitalization for types and also for um, uh, any other elements that link back to this. If you was to make all this lower case, it will break the schema.org. But what this does is I'll bring over uh, this notepad um, and I'll explain a little bit about why it works and why it helps you. So WP Adblock is uh, a specific um, format, if you like, or markup that schema.org says is an advert area. It's a block where you can put adverts that you want. Now, as with every other 
um, sort of section um, within schema.org. We're trying to keep this as simple as possible. You have lots and lots of properties that you can add into that ad block if you want to. Okay. Now, the, the whole thing about the semantic web and where this is going is it's all about highlighting and identifying facts, specific things about your page. And the more of this markup that you have, the easier it is for the search engines to determine what your pages, your articles, your website is about. And because it's easier, you get that additional bonus, uh, the, the higher ranking um, within the search engines. And the last tests uh, um, we've seen suggest quite strongly that Google gives a, a three-place bump upwards for sites that use well-constructed schema.org. Okay, so in their wisdom, and thankfully, they have already the, the sponsors have already given us a markup element to say that this is an ad block. Okay, so. What we do is, I've already done the markup, so the banner that you put in here, you can just put your banner in there, and it will already be marked up for you as an advert, so you don't need to worry about that at all. Just put your um, banner ad in that top part, and that will be fine. So, the next thing to look at is this element of code that I've put here for you. Now, what this is, is it's um, a, a two-way system, if you like, using schema.org that says that this area is not as important as the rest of the page, and it's an advert, okay? And to just show you that, let me copy and paste that, move this out of the way, and bring in the definition of schema.org mentions. Okay? And the important part here is that this indicates that the creative work contains a reference to that is not necessarily about a concept. Now what that means is that um, you, you have a page which is talking about, in, in one case there, brand building, and the thing that mentions something else is on the page, but not about that concept. And what that does is uh, basically say to the search engines and other semantic parsers that although this content is here and users can use it, don't give it as much importance as you do to the video and the content that's on the page. Now, can I get a one from everyone if you understand that concept, and a two if you don't? <coughs> Excellent. Okay. So, this um, add markup notepad file will be put into the members area as well. And there's two different, uh, three different, two elements that I put here. Now, this top element. What it says is div item prop mentions, and it mentions an ad block. So it, looking at this, we can say that this whole area contains a reference to, but isn't about the concept, and i.e. the concept will be the page. And then what we do is we say that's because it's an ad block. So you can already see that smart, intelligent engines will know straight off that this advert is, you know, or text link is not as important as anything else. And in the second part of this file, what I've done is it's basic HTML wrapped in the schema.org markup that allows you to put um, a link to a page with the no follow, and that's still important um, because Google have said that things that aren't important, especially adverts, no follow them. And then you can have your image, which will be the banner, and don't forget your alternative text. 
Now, what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to open up the Google Rich Snippets testing tool. I'll move this out of the way. And you've all got the link to this, hopefully. Um, and if not, you will have when you get this document. And what I've done is I've wrapped that markup into body tags. So essentially, our article pages, okay, when we paste this in and preview it, you can see straight away that although the page is an article and the markup within the theme will give you video and everything else, it mentions item one, and in this case, item one is a declared ad block with a URL link. Okay, so the logic behind this is that now, um, if you were to do the same thing with your text-based link here, okay, with the nofollow, although you're going to get the benefits of um, sloppy search engines um, taking the link and that kind of juice coming through, A, you're saying it's nofollow, and B, you're telling the search engines that it's an advert and theoretically you should not get penalized for doing that. So can I get a one if that excites you and a two if you just think, nah, okay, Kev. Oh, Kevin, knock that off. Okay, so <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk, let's give Kevin a break for a second so that we can just review. Not all of you are super advanced. Some of you are... Advanced. I just want to. I just want to look at Brian. I just. I want to go over really quickly what the meaning and the implication of everything that we're doing here. Um, probably shouldn't reveal this, but will because you guys are badasses. Uh, on the hundreds and hundreds of pin bid sites that we have during this whole Skyfall Phase Two, only one was penalized, and it had a remote relationship with a do follow link that was an advert to a PINVID, I mean to a PBN network. All right, that's not something I probably should even reveal. It was only one, guys. Then the reason it was hit, very likely, we're, this is still up for, I might get slapped around or get whipped for this one, but it's very I'm likely. <laughs> <laughs> it's very likely that that occurred. First of all, we now know it absolutely is related to the Skyfall connected to, um, it was definitely a PBN relationship. It was the one experiment we were doing that was indirectly related to PBN. Okay, uh, that being said, the, look at the implications here, what we're showing you. Of course, I won't repeat everything that Kevin said to me about <laughs> this afterward, but um, the bottom line is, you know, basically, you know, as a semantic expert, his concept was, okay, first of all, yes, should have been no follow. I was called out already on Sue on that one. The other thing is, Kevin was like, well, were, was your advert text or your advert banner that was potentially accidentally you forgot to put the nofollow in there? Was it marked up properly, informing the engines who appreciate your schema what it was, right? So the answer would be you want to both do the nofollow to follow the Jimmy Kelly method, regardless of whether you're engaging in risky activities such as PBNs or uh, whether you're not. Now, first and foremost, as Kevin and I talked about before this call, pin bins are not in any regards, linking schemes, you guys. And there are people, many people coming from different all walks of life that are coming into this event and coming into this course that are using them as such. But keep in mind that uh, I have dozens of, I'm, I'm not recommending you do this, okay? This, I'm just confidentially speaking to you about my experience. I've got websites that are pin bids that have over, that are up, upward of half a million pages. Every single link everywhere within, are all follow. Okay, <laughs> and they haven't been penalized. So the issue becomes then how you're relating to the links. Kevin has marked the theme up so that you guys are both, like you're in, in a very interesting way, it's possible to automate with proper schema uh, engaging content. It's, it's very, very interesting where we are with this. Now, in, one of the reasons that we stepped forward with this method is because of Kevin needing to point out to me that you know, the banner, if you guys have that, you know, the banner on the front page of your pin vid, as soon as it's installed, is already got proper schema on it. That's because P, uh, Kevin um, already added that. I don't think he's got that turned on in this demo site. No, but, I've not got the banner there, but yeah. that block is my 
on top. Yeah, so that banner, as you guys have that option, I showed you in the webinar, go back to the webinar, that is already marked up correctly by Kevin. I didn't even know it could be marked up. So now, just wanted to emphasize the obvious to you guys, just point out the implication of where you can go by properly utilizing these. I didn't even know that mentions and WP ad blocks was a schema until <laughs> you told me about it. So that's very, very cool. Okay, thanks, Kevin. Not a problem. Um, the, the other sort of follow-up um, that I just want to put in is this element here is within the course, Russ has said under the globe area here for you to put some text in here with a link to somewhere else. Okay, Absolutely nothing wrong with you putting a link to somewhere else provided you follow the basic rules that Google wants. Now, just to be safer, as Russ has just said, this isn't a site where you want to have links directly to your money site or the tier underneath. These type of sites are all about encouraging user engagement on the site. Okay, You've all been to sites and you go to sites daily for you know your, your little bit of relaxation. And on those sites are adverts. Now if those adverts just happen to point to the sites where you want them, so be it. This isn't about creating link juice. This is about engaging with your users, putting appropriate ghetto ads that attract their attention and letting them come through to where you want them in the funnel naturally. And all we've done is use what the sponsors of schema.org have given us okay, to help them understand that this is an advert. We're not trying to beat the system, folks. This is an advert, we're telling you. Does it, yeah. So if you take, yeah? I was just going to, again, what you just said, Kevin, there is brilliant. You guys understand? I know you do. I just want to, this is kind of a rhetorical question, but I, in the form of an interactive, give me a one if you understand that, and I know some of you here are for other reasons, are for, you know, you have ideas and you're here. Andy, I didn't even ask the question. Oh, interesting. You guys are giving me ones I haven't even asked the question. <laughs> give me a, okay, if you guys are multimillionaires. Just kidding. Okay, so um, let, me, let me just point out this. Nowhere in the PidVid course anywhere whatsoever is there anything in terms of the standard setup okay and I'm not talking about stuff that we get into at certification like the battery method and all that which is not really the core stuff okay nowhere in this course is there anything about link juice um, gaming within the pinvid model it's all about engagement rank and that would actually interestingly in include the the semantic web just give me a one if you understand that and two if you want me to clarify and create that distinction I know it's really hard, you know, link gaming is a lot like crack. Once you get involved, it's hard to get out. I'm not saying that there's not appropriate places to understand link flow, link juice. We have all kinds of other courses for that. Just want you guys to know this course is really about engagement rank and how to appropriately serve up, whether it's semi-automatic, automatic, or manual, content that focuses on engagement rank, doesn't give a crap about link juice gaming, and includes every benefit and markup that you have by just following the rules as they already exist. Half of the problem comes from just thinking that you need to, out of the gate, not utilize, I mean, use, utilize a bunch of rules that are not there, and then you're not even optimizing the benefits that you already have. You guys understand what I'm saying there? Give me one. <clears throat> and then Brian is, Brian is saying, but you probably do still get a search engine results page boost in WR01 due to engagement rank and traffic to it. Uh, well, if, you're, if you want to talk about WR01, I can absolutely tell you that traffic, it is to, you do get a benefit of rankings site-wide, not only to WR01's, Brian, but to pin vids when the time on site is higher. And if you're on the first page of Google, that's when the results really come in for time on site. It's usually a, more than a tie, it's generally a tiebreaker if you're in the top 10 or 10 positions already. If you're on nine and you have more traffic that's higher engagement, you will get a bump from that almost all the time. Okay, that's, that's that. So just, I want to just emphasize that, guys, that we're not focused on gaming. This is, I know it's obvious, but okay, thanks, Kevin. Okay, so 
just to make this um, even plainer still for you, I've just literally cut and paste the element that you can see here into the widget under the uh, revolver maps. So if I save this uh, now, that's saved, and if I come back to the site, uh, where did that go? What have I forgotten? Ah, there you go, your text here. Now, if I go and check with the Google Structured Data Testing tool, okay, um, I'm not too worried about the missing HCARD authors for that particular um, page. Um, it would help if I made it easier for us to see on one single page. Okay. Um, but again, just so that you know, even the front page is correctly marked up. So here we've got the mentions, and then we've got mentions three and four. Okay. And here, mentions three is the ad block, the <laughs> URL, and it's your text here. There can be no argument, realistically, wow. with what that is, that this is an advert. Google, this is an advert. Ignore it for me, please. And when they get around to finally realizing, you'll have already had the benefit. So that's as simple as that is. That's crazy. Okay. <laughs> Any questions? No, that? that's good. <laughs> and so the same thing. Okay, so you did the text, and then pretty much the same steps will be followed with a banner. Like, yep. Okay. Exactly the same steps. You know, gotcha. it's, a, it's a no follow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're doing what Google says. You can have whatever text that you want here. You know, BBCs. You name it. It can go there. It's a link. You are telling Google categorically that a this mentions this text, but it's not important to the page, and it's an advert, and we've now followed the link. Okay? And the end result is that you get a marked up link to wherever you want that says it's an advert. I can't see any reason whatsoever that Google would say that you are trying to gain the system. In fact, I'd be happy to argue in front of Google that we've just gone out of our way to tell you that this is nothing to do with the page, just give us back our love. Well, if you go to the uh, schema uh, conference, Kevin, with David Amerlin, uh, you probably will have an opportunity to argue with them, <laughs> yeah. or at least argue on behalf. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that. It, it That's really cool. It is that simple. You know, j just think that, you know, sort of facts, um, semantic word is the way forward. This really is the cutting edge, if not the bleeding edge, folks. Okay. Um, I have a I, I, I have a naughty qu I have a naughty question, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Because we're all like super mastermind groups here. All right, you just mm -hmm. now in one of our weeks back in certification level two, Jimmy and I showed everybody how to actually create a JPEG file which had SEO marked into it, mm -hmm. and it's based on the patent of Google Search. I just want the guys to know that your banner is an image, and the image can be JPEG. That's independent of this. So you do the math. <laughs> yeah. And if you wanted to go the whole white hog, and I haven't sort of tested that, you could also mark up the image, the banner image, as an image. But my concern there, and why I haven't put that code into this text file for you folks, is that we've still got the unanswered question about the images that Facebook pulls from the pages. So for the time being, my strong advice is mark it up as an ad block, but don't mark up the image that you're going to use as a banner as an image. J just help yourself as much as possible. You know, you're telling Facebook, you're telling Google, you're telling any one of the pastors that this area should be ignored for the purposes of ranking. But what it can't be ignored by is your visitors that are spending time on the site. And when you've got a well-structured ghetto banner that's related to the topic they want and it's interesting, when they click through, you get the benefit and you haven't tried to game the system. And that is essential that you keep that in mind. 
Got it. I think we got it, Kevin. That's really, really cool. Brian asked, uh, you're concerned about it affecting ability to share the image with the corresponding link. Well, actually, what, what's happening, Brian, is Facebook uses something called op Open Graph. I keep kicking back uh, certain questions to Kevin. Uh, it's not just on his theme. It's like everybody. It's everybody who <laughs> yeah. creates themes. Um, open Graph, of course, Yoast has an Open Graph click by default, I think, when you install it. Uh, the, yeah. I think the theme also, I'm not sure if we're dependent upon Open Graph for Yoast now or if Kevin no, wrote no, Open no, Graph. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so let, let me be absolutely sure that you all understand that um, Russ has alluded to it before where he says, don't get Kev started about Yoast. Okay, so to be absolutely specific, I consider Yoast bloatware. I don't think that you need it. Um, I'm concerned about the amount of plugins that people needed, and longer term, we're trying to put things together that reduce your dependency on having plugins. So this particular theme, it's already got the OG markup for Facebook in there, okay? And we tell them that the image that we want Facebook to use is um, not an advert. We ask Facebook to use the image um, that comes in with the video. So we're doing all we can, um, and obviously these big companies that you know sort of are um, silos of the web, uh, they tend to sort of catch up with us eventually. Okay, so we already put OG markup into the theme for you. You don't need to worry about that. Okay, so um, let's. See if there's anything else. That I well, think there's a, just just to close the topic of the open graph because I, I think you've given us quite enough, to be honest, <laughs> um, to think about. I mean, I'm going to be chewing on this for a couple of days myself. So, um, one thing I just wanted to say about the open graph thing is, Facebook's open graph is pretty much its own, I believe, Kevin. Um, mm -hmm. It's their own. Just know that that's a proprietary aspect of of calling. I, I don't know enough. I'm not a coder, uh, but I know that it's specific to them. And I, yeah. it's possible because of what I've been, we'll get this worked out for you guys to be sure. It's possible that when you go to the uh, Facebook debugger tool, I'll be able to show you that sometimes, like one of you, I think it was either Andy or uh, Brian, Andy. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of the things that happens is occasionally it'll pull back your banner if you've got the banner under the video. And that actually depends on a couple of things of which we won't speak to now. Uh, for example, if you're using the owl.ly from Hootsuite, which I've taught you to do, that could actually be an issue uh, on the, of the load time of the URL. In other words, the time it takes Open Graph and the debugger or to parse the, the link. It could be one of many things, of which we won't uh, make a claim here. The bottom line is that even when Andy's issue came up, it was only hitting one or two of the posts where the banner would come up instead of the video uh, you know, thumb. That's not the end of the world. That's the main quest thing I want you guys to be aware of, that if you get one or two banners on Facebook on your page automatically going through, that's not a big deal. If you're getting nothing but banners on Google+, Plus, that is not that is a bigger deal. Just know that that's a, you don't want to run only banners through a, a, a Google+, Plus page. Google really frowns on uh, the banners. Now, that brings up an interesting question of a friend of mine who got his Google+, Plus page banned for ads. Uh, which no one, very few people have heard about, but I actually confirmed it. Uh, I saw that, and it's kind of a rare event. It makes me wonder if those ads were marked up, whether they would have still done that. <laughs> probably, <laughs> Kevin, they probably would have. I mean, mostly it was the impact, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it, with things like that, it, it's the visual impact. Yes. So, uh, right. And to have the same, the same image appearing so many times, it's like a it's spam. Image. Yeah, I mean, it's visual yeah, it, spam. It's, it's the, yeah, it's a red flag, and another way of overcoming that to a degree would be to have you know, a number of different ads saying same things. Um, as time goes on, the, these companies should honour the markup that we've put in place for them and not show your adverts. They yeah, should exactly. show the, the image that's here. And you know, all I can say is rest assured that the markup that's there, you have good, really good grounds if Google do something because an advert has come up on their page to say, well, why did you choose an advert? It's your fault. <laughs> Kevin's the kind of guy who would, you know, when he resubmitted something in Google Webmaster Tools, it would have a 10-page explanation that was all in code. And they would go, oh, sorry about that. 
re <laughs> re index. They, 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 <laughs> they, they did once. I, I had to point out to them that their Google Webmaster tools was showing incorrect data compared to their structured data yeah. the testing tool. I mean, guys, I, I was only half joking. They fixed it. Yeah, I was only half joking. This is what Kevin does. I mean, you would not believe this guy. It's it's really really funny. Um, so and then they'll, then they'll say, "Would you like to work for us?" <laughs> um, so I, guys, that's enough today. I can feel that we're right at this point where we could go in. I have a lot of topics I'd like to discuss, but it's a couple of things going on. We are working on social explosion upgrades today. Thank for you, thanks for all of you guys who've been helping us with the various things that might come up here and there. Uh, we are also working on. Thanks to Kevin and Mike Hayden. I don't think he's here, but uh, we now are in beta, I believe, of the all-new website silo architecture plugins, as if I didn't have enough on my plate this week traveling on Saturday to the live event. Uh, not to mention all kinds of very cool updates to our courses. So we've got a lot of stuff going on. And uh, so bottom line is I think we're going to end it here. I'm going to go ahead and cancel next week's uh, bonus webinar for the PinVid course. I will continue, however, to add material. I will add this webinar to the uh, webinar workshop page, and I will add it to the page here dedicated to the markup for this banner and feature. And uh, anything else you want to add to that, Kevin? I really appreciate you taking time out for this for us. Much appreciated. No, I, th I think we've uh, got it all covered, um, and we'll be back in uh, a couple of weeks. So I, just, I just want to make sure, Tony. Uh, I just said, no, I'm canceling next week's webinar. Uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, actually, when is week the... Week after next. Let me just double check. Um, yes, the event is... I definitely cannot be here on the 12th. The 19th might be doable, but I might be traveling. So stay tuned for whether our next event... I'll get to, How about this? I'll let you guys know when the next, the next event for the PinVid course will be. And I'm still actually waiting to see some of your sites. Uh, if you haven't shown me your site because you want to keep it private, I completely understand. But I'm still waiting. <laughs> you have to get signed off to be pin bit approved. I'm very interested in having you know a few people that really know what they're doing for various reasons, which we will discuss in December, if not January. Okay. So that's that's probably it for now. Kevin, you have anything to close? Or are we good? I think we're good. Okay. Uh, oh, actually, one last thing before we go. Um, on the uh, Kevin, just wanted to check in with you on the hosting side of things, just to switch topics completely. Okay. Every, everything is going well in the hosting department, and availability is there. For the, there's a couple people on this call who've actually uh, they're tiptoeing towards actually getting a service who haven't already. Every, everything's uh, available there. Uh, the scalability has yeah. been happening. Yeah, everything is up, running smoothly. It's quick. Um, some of the people that have already taken advantage of their three free months have got sites up. Um, we're getting some good feedback from there. So all I can say is, you know, if you haven't taken advantage of those three free months already, um, come over. The information on how to do that is in the course. Sign up. Um, and we'll get you sorted out. We'll give you a call, have a chat, see where you want to go. Um, we'll set up your excellent, excellent blog. Just you know, sort of. I'll leave it with you guys. That's what I was looking for. All right, you guys. We will go ahead and schedule the. I'll let you know in the chat room as soon as I have the next date that we will schedule this because of this event we have going on. I look so forward to hearing from you. Doesn't mean I'm going to drop off the face of the planet because I'm traveling. Just means I'm not going to plan uh, next week or during the event. Look forward to seeing you guys on the other webinars. Tomorrow is Tech Foundation 1, Week 2, of which I am also teaching on persuasion architecture as it is combined with website style architecture, a topic almost ne'er discussed like anywhere and the thing that frustrated me the most in my 10-year career in website style architecture, which is why we created the technology we did. So I look forward to seeing all the new students in there any of you want to audit the Persuasion Architecture course, I will see you tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat cave. Check, it, check you guys out later. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.